The Gary Knoll Show, daily at noon on the Progressive Radio Network. I'm Gary Knoll, and I'd like to welcome you to this program. Well, now over to my guest, Gerald Salante. Gerald, as many of you know, has been the founder of the Trends Journal, which is published four times a year at trends or trendresearch.com. He is one of the leading strategists in the world today on almost all trends and including 300 different fields that he looks into with his staff in depth. It's nice to have you back with us today, Gerald. Oh, thanks for having me, Gary. Gerald, I'm going to give you two interlo- interlocking uh, questions. First, yesterday with questions that the uh, Greek government might do something as irresponsible and as uh, stupid as actually asking their public, do you want us to pay back the banks or do you want to, uh, us to rebuild our society? Uh, actually implement democracy in the heart of democracy originally. The banks went into a nosedive, investors too. Today, they're back up and the stock markets regain what it lost yesterday. People are watching the stock market and all the enthusiasm for how good we're all doing is coming from these artificial fit figures. So I want you to explain to this audience why there is no true indication that we're improving because of watching the stock market. And separately, it is my feeling, and I've made this clear repeatedly, that I see that the Greek unions and will lose all support if they don't demand this uh, referendum. I believe the Greek people will vote unanimously against bailing out the banks, which will put them at 200 percent deficit, which means for every dollar that they earn in Greece, they owe two dollars to these financial institutions. And that as a result, at some point, Germany and European Central Bank and France are going to demand Greece leave the 27-member European Union and one of its 17 using currency, get it off the euro, and probably at the same time do the same thing with Portugal, maybe Spain, and I doubt Italy. But I'm, I'm watching Ireland. The Irish are really angry. They have taken an enormous hit. The property values are in the toilet. They're not coming back. People are filing bankruptcies at an astronomical level, and yet they're not a whole lot better than uh, Greece is a percentage of their gross uh, debt or their total debt against their gross domestic product. I see Gr- uh, Ireland taking a message on what Greece does and following suit. That's what I see happening, and that's going to have implications here. Could you give us your analysis, please? Yes, and going <clears throat> first to Greece, there, when you start hearing about how much they're going to get in bailouts, right, let's understand what a bailout is. A bailout's another loan. And so it's a new loan on top of an old loan. And these are nothing more, just so we could put this in clear context, these are nothing more than loan sharks. So the loan shark works like this. Listen, Gary, why don't you borrow some money? You know, you could grow your business a lot. And don't worry about it. I'm going to charge you cheap interest rates. And you could really, really expand because you need to grow. We want you to continually grow, even though continual growth is unsustainable. We're going to pretend it is. So I want you to borrow more money. Gerald, look, what if, you know, I I, I borrow more, I'm going to to make the terms easy, Gary. You borrow the money, you pay me back when you get it. Everything is, the economy is booming. So you borrow the money from me. I'm the bank. I'll be Credit Suisse, or Deutsche Bank, or the Goldman Sachs gang. Or the uh, the Morgan Stanley guys, you know? So you borrow some money from me. And now all of a sudden, business turns sour after a steroid growth hit. And I come back to you, Gary, listen, you're late on your payments. Gerald, I don't have any more money. I can't pay you everything that's coming in. I want my money. How am I going to get more money? Tax the people. Raise their ta- How can I tax them? They're, they're losing their jobs. I want my money. All right, I'll tax the people more. Then I, 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 you're not giving me enough money. I tax the people. I want you to raise their electric rates. I want you to increase their home heating fuel. Winter's coming. Let them pay more. You do that. We'll call it austerity measures. We'll give it a nice name. It's not enough money. I want more money. I Listen, I want your ports. 
I want your electric supply. I want your property. We're going to call it privatization. You got it? And that's what they're doing. That's all this is. This is this. These are not. These are not banks. They're financial criminals. I've said this before, and I'm going to keep saying it over and over and over again. If the names on Wall Street were named Salenti, Caruso, Mondavi, Puccini, Rossini, they call it the mafia. And they have this wonderful language out there. They don't call it the mafia. These are financiers. So now we'll go back to Greece. They have to make, here's the word they use, the troika happy. You know who the troika is? That's the International Monetary Fund, or, as I like to call them, the International Mafia Federation. And then they have to please the other second of the Troika, the European Commission. And the third of the Troika, the European Central Bank. Why don't we take the name Troika out and call them the crime families? That's all they are. But they don't have names like Maya, Lansky, or Lucky Luciano. We'll call them Jean-Claude Trichet. Now, doesn't that sound nice? Or how about Christine Lagarde? That's, that's much nicer. So this is all that's going on, is that the banks made bad bets. They're not bailing out anybody. All they're doing is taking on more loans. They'll never pay it back. They're almost a half a trillion dollars in debt, the Greeks are. So every time they're going to get $8 billion more, that's just to pay, that's just to pay the VIG, you know, on, on the loan. That's all that is. So what they're doing, and when you're putting this all together, it has to become really clear. You mentioned about Ireland. You mentioned about Portugal. This is a global meltdown. It's, it's, it's the beginning, as I've been writing about in the Trends Journal now for over a year, it's the beginning of the first great war of the 21st century. You play back the clock, Gary. Let's go back to 1929. You have the crash of 29. Then you have a Great Depression. There's a Great Depression going on. You know what the unemployment, the official unemployment, for example, in Spain is? Eh, only 22% official. And it's like that around most of the, a lot of the globe. So now you have this high unemployment, so you have the Great Depression followed by, that, that, that followed the crash of 29, and then you have currency wars. Pick up the paper. The yen, the yen. What are they doing? There's a currency war. They're trying to drive down the value of the yen. The Swiss drove down the value of the franc. This currency war is going on. Listen to Mantega from Brazil. There's a currency war going on. And now what's going on? China said a trade war is going on. Ah, sounds like the 1930s all over again, doesn't it? Great Depression, currency war, trade wars, world wars. Now let's put the pieces together. They're rioting in Spain. They're, 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 but they call them the indignados in Spain. And then there's the anarchists. You know, that's what they are. They're anarchists in Greece that are out in the streets. Those aren't just angry people that are talking and getting screwed. No, no, they're anarchists, I tell you. And then you go over to Tunisia. Them are Islamo-fascists. And then you go over there to, to Egypt. I'll tell you, Gary, it's the Muslim Brotherhood. And then you go over to the U.K. this past August. It was hooligans that were out in the streets. Just listen to what David Cameron said. What, that's what you're seeing. you're seeing. You're seeing with all the Occupy movements. This is angry people holding university degrees in worthlessness that are getting shafted from the top and having being forced to bail out the banks. I heard that clown, the pizza cat, you know, running for president, Herman Cain. He said that those people on Wall Street, on Occupy Wall Street, they're anti-capitalist. Oh, they are? Got news for you, Herman. It's anti-capitalist to bail out banks. Capiche? It's anti-capitalist to bail out too big to fail. Get it? So this is what's going on. We're looking at a breakdown of the entire global economic system. The world is at war. And they're not calling it that. They're calling them all different names. And when you put it all together, that's all it is. There's no bailing out anybody. It's one big Ponzi scheme. And what they say with the, U with the Europeans, we got to give them a bazooka shot. Oh, a bazooka shot. Oh, you mean dump in more digital money that's not worth the paper it's not printed on. What are your thoughts concerning Iran, since there's a great deal of neoconservative 
and neoliberal positioning to make a preemptive strike or to support Israel making a preemptive strike in Iran? We've said this over and over again. When all else fails, they take you to war. And as we wrote, and you got the copy of the Autumn Trends Journal, it just went out. We did a whole piece on Iran, that moronic story they tried to make up about, you know, hiring this guy through the Mexican drug cartel to off the ambassador of Saudi Arabia. You know, so, so yeah, so and now you you pick up the news, and what's the headline when you when you when you see it? Uh, Israel test fires Jericho missile. Washington fears unilateral strike. BB rallies support for Iran attack. BB, how about Bobo? How about fascist? And this is what's going on. Look, and you the neoliberals, they're as disgusting as the as the neocons. And, and look what look what that wonderful war that Obama and and the rest of them, Hillary Clinton, Samantha Powers, and Susan Rice, the three witches of Macbeth, took us to war with Libya. Oh, you remember that humanitarian war to save people as they leveled cities. They're going to take us to war. You read Hillary Clinton's statements about Iran. And you can see they're leading us to war. Whether or not we go, if we go to war with Iran, this is the beginning of World War III. People better get that in their heads. These are the Persians. They've been around a long time. There are 70 million of them. And the United States, remember, wonderful Donald Rumsfeld going over to visit Saddam Hussein and handing them the golden spurs. Remember that photograph? As they waged a war, started by the United States supporting Iraq to fight Iran in the 1980s. The Iranians lost a million people and didn't give up one inch of territory. Anybody thinks they're going to beat the Iranians, I'll tell you what, pack up your gear, take your wife, your kids, send your money, and go do the fighting, because you're going to lose. Gerald, let's take a look now at what it means to be the 250 million Americans who are just above, at, or below the poverty level. I have not seen these people in the streets yet. I have not seen them protesting, but I'm out there filming them. And they're angry, and they're armed. They're that kind of very silent group of people. You can push them a long way before they snap, but I see that there's going to be a class warfare in the United States in the relatively near future, two to three years, where these people have nothing more to lose. They're, no one's doing anything to stop their homes from being foreclosed on, to help them with loan forgiveness, their kids' loan forgiveness from schools. They're being hammered by both the Democrats and Republicans in Congress, and there's a point to which they're not going to take it anymore. But no one's at all paying attention to them. I believe that's where the tinderbox issue is going to ignite, not what's happening in the street now. It's a completely different energy in the streets compared to these people. Your thoughts, please. Oh, I agree with you. And as a matter of fact, that's what the Summer Trends Journal is about. It's class warfare. It's begun. You know my saying, when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. And when the money stops flowing down to the man on the street, the blood starts flowing in the streets. And that's what you're seeing around the world. And that's what we're saying. The first great war of the 21st century has begun. You know how they say that generals always fight the last war? And that's what they're doing now. This isn't going to be a war, you know, of tanks on battlefields. It's going to be, it's going to be guerrilla war. And you're going to see more and more of outrage against the rich. You know, we wrote we wrote in the Trends Journal in this issue that we were comparing, you know, what Marx had written about uh, in, in the you know, uh, quite over a hundred and something years ago. And and he, we I, we wrote this line: he would have been laughed out of the history books if he would have ever suggested, because they were talking about the bourgeoisie, uh, you know, the dictators. Of, uh, and and the, the autocrats, he would have been laughed out of the history books if he could have ever imagined that the people would have had been forced to bail out the Rothschilds. And that's what we're being forced right now. We have these money junkies out there that keep telling us that if they fail, we go down with them. 
And look at this guy, Corzine. I love it. It's the perfect one. You know, that, that company that just folded. What was it, MP uh, yeah. Global? Is, is that the initials yeah. for it? Um, two, two, trillion do- uh, two billion dollars they lost. Yeah, what, and what did he bet on? He bet on he bet on European bonds. And this is a guy. This is another Goldman Sachs guy, right? Uh, that he was also the governor of of New Jersey and senator of New Jersey. Oh yeah, brilliant cat. I mean, look at that, you know. And what did he get as a going away present? Twelve million dollars. You think Gerald, it makes people angry? Yeah, Gerald. Last, I need a quick answer because we're running out of time here for this last two points. What do you see happening as far as the euro? What do you see happening as far as gold and silver and the dollar in the next 12 to 24 months? We're forecasting gold 2,000. Uh, it's all I own is gold and silver, about 80, 90% gold, 10% silver. And I, I have silver because I'm concerned that they're going to regulate the supply and sale of gold at some point as they've done before. They did it in 1933, the Federal Emergency Banking Act. And they're going to blame the decline of the dollar and all of these fiat currencies on gold speculators. Hold your thoughts one second. My guest is Gerald Salante, C-E-L-E-N-T-E. The website is trendresearch.com. He publishes the Trend Journal. We're going to say goodbye to those who are listening over a terrestrial land base station. You can continue listening for the next five minutes to this over progressive radio network.com. Gerald, let's take a look at three things. We don't live in a cocoon. I'm already talking with people in this around the world about moving back towards um, uh, shared communities or sustainable communities, homesteads, and I've made a map. It's up on the website, the best places in the world. It's original. We did it all from scratch, and we looked at everything, crime rates, um, progressive communities, water, soil, away from nuke, away from hydrofracking. Uh, far enough away from a city that you're not going to be affected when the lights could go out in the solar uh, storms that are coming. And, and, and on the one side of the solar storm issue is they're definitely coming. That's not in dispute. All, all astrophysicists say that. It's how bad will they be. If it's the Carrington effect, the worst that we saw in the 1800s, virtually every one of the northeast, midwest, and, and uh, northwest power grids will burn out, not just break, as their lines are now, but burn out, which the only replacement parts are in China and India, and there's no way to get that information and get it here, because they're also in the northern hemisphere, and they're also going to have their cities fried as well. So I'm looking at what could be on the worst scale, massive destruction because of, uh, of the nuclear power plants after a week of being on a backup generator. They're out of electricity and they have no surge protectors. They have not had uh, a rewiring to keep the electric in the plant so you can keep the two and a half billion gallons of water per day coming into cool to spend fuel rods. You've got two of them. That's five billion just on the Hudson at Indian Point. So we're looking at all this and I'm saying you better start planning now. If it doesn't happen, you're no worse off. If it does happen, it literally could mean survival. But let's say the nuclear power plants uh, get surge protectors, 104 of them, and, and rewire themselves. Yeah, unlikely, but let's say it's possible. You're still dealing with a society that's not going to be having any water, electricity, or food. And imagine then what could be going on. Give us your projections of what's going to happen quickly in with the euro, with Ireland in particular, because Ireland's got... Ireland's uh, way ahead of Greece as far as education, standard of living, achievements in, in the current sense, and it's quiet right now, but I believe it's a quiet that uh, you've got to understand the Irish people. Don't be misled by the fact that you're not seeing riots in the street or protests, that they're not ready to move in a particular direction. And uh, then in the United States, give us your overview, please. Well, the euro, I, I see it collapsing, and and a matter of fact... You know, a telling line that was in the um, in the Financial Times, and it was Berlusconi came out and said what a joke the euro was, and then of course he retracted it immediately. But you know, that, that's that's here, here's the line. As a matter of fact, I, I saved it. Uh, in Italy, Mr. Berlusconi insisted there was no credible alternative to his government. Of course not, and called the euro quote a strange currency that has not convinced anyone. Now remember, this is coming from you know the, the the head of one of the largest economies in the world, 
a strange currency that has not convinced anyone. And then they write this, though he later issued a statement to clarify his support for the euro. <laughs> That's why they call them prostitutes, because they write that. They, they, they clarified a statement. The euro is going to go the way of all of the fiat currencies and countries that overextended and have taken on debt that they can no longer pay off. And we see it declining, and we see a time of the uh, that we said when the beginning of the European uh, Monetary Union began that it was being it was being fashioned at a time of great hopes for globalization. Remember, China they weren't doing business in the late 1980s, so by the late 1990s, globalization was really catching on when the euro came on and remember you know most of the, up until again 1990 uh, early 90s uh, everything east of the Berlin Wall was behind the Iron Curtain so there was this great euphoria of globalization so the euro looked good under those conditions and so we don't see it sustaining as to what could happen the systems are going to break down at some point you were just talking about the outages that are still going on in Connecticut and, and, I mean, and this is under good conditions, and look how long it's taking to repair them. If there's a, a, a nuclear disaster, a Fukushima-level disaster, or even less than that, there'll be massive chaos everywhere. You know, I have Gerald Salenti's GC's 3G's, guns, gold, and a getaway plan. And, and as you pointed out, prepare for the worst. If the worst doesn't happen, you lost nothing by preparing. But if the worst happens and you're not prepared, you lose everything. And I really believe we're in the, that critical time right now. This thing could go either way at any time, whether it's, whether it's a Carrington effect or a moronic effect from people that, are, that call themselves politicians that are sociopaths and psychopaths that want to start war. So in any event, we're going into a winter of discontent. And people should prepare for it. My final thought here. I believe that the smart European bankers and money managers are fully aware that if they're in that insider's loop with Federal Reserve, that even if they lose bets, they will be bailed out as $16 trillion was given to these same people in the United States and Europe, banks, corporations, and even governments, by the Fed in secret. It was only Bernie Sanders who allowed us to know this. Now, I bet that uh, they're looking at about $6 trillion over there right now uh, that is susceptible. And I believe that the Fed will back these people up and bail them out. I just believe that the smart ones are betting uh, on this because they know that they'll be helped. I want your thoughts on the Federal Reserve and where do you see the dollar going in the United States over the next 24 months? I agree with you on the Federal Reserve. They're going to do something. And, and the European Central Banks are going to print money, too. They call it buying bonds, which they weren't supposed to ever do. And that's what Trisha said they would never do, and they did it. So they're just going to keep the Ponzi scheme going. In the meantime, it devalues their currency. And as we all know, Ponzi schemes come to an end. When will they come to an end? I don't know. And what happens with the dollar? Well, you can see the seesaw that it keeps taking. You know, the euro goes up, the dollar goes down, the dollar goes down, the euro goes up. But it's really jumping out of the Titanic and going for, from the Lusitania into the Titanic because both of them are going to go down. They're both going, what, what they're, but it's not being shown so much in inflation, although there is inflation, but they're cooking the numbers. What it is is a devaluation of the currency. So, for example, it, 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 the the price of the commodity doesn't necessarily rise. It just takes more of your dollars to buy them. The net effect, of course, is still inflation, but in a very different way. So I don't know where the dollar is going to go. However, having said that, again, my money is, is and I'm only speaking for myself, my money, I don't give financial advice, my money is totally in gold and silver. I do not trust these foreign, these, these paper currencies. I'm glad. And I'm hopeful that people in the next 12 months to 24 months will realize, work with other people, share quality assets, and look at making a more sustainable, healthy life in a more rural environment, close enough to a major city that is sustainable, but far enough away from nuclear hydrofracking and what could very possibly be a social uh, anarchy at some levels. And if you're not rich enough to live in one of those protected green zones where the security, private uh, armed forces will be, then you could have a lot of trouble 
facing you. So, Gerald, I think we're on the same page with those issues. Let's hope that it seeps into people's consciousness where they actually move. I mean, uh, people were calling, and Elizabeth said, can we give um, uh, bulk items like beans and grains, of which are about 60 varieties, in 25, 50 pound bags to people at cost? And I said, sure you can, as long as they come pick it up. And at the 89th and Broadway, uh, seven days a week, they come in there from the morning till night and do that. But I'm only doing this once because a lot of people right now, I mean, after the hurricane where they had flooding and no no fuel and no food, and now after this, how many times do you got to have a wake-up call before you realize what if a big one happened where you could be months without food or water and you don't even have an emergency home kit, you have no flashlights, you have no bites, you have nothing. And I'm afraid that most people are going to wait until something really like a Katrina uh, happens, then they'll get their attention until that time they won't. And those who read Trends Journal can see what's coming at them. So, Gerald Salante, thank you very much for all your good work. We look forward to our next conversation. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Gary. Gerald Salante, Trends Journal. It's at trendsresearch.com. Sorry that I've gone over in this program by five minutes uh, to the next uh, host. I look forward to sharing more tomorrow. Have a nice day, everyone. The Gary Knoll Show, daily at noon on the Progressive Radio Network. I'm Gary Knoll, and I'd like to welcome you to this program. Well, now over to my guest, Gerald Salante. Gerald, as many of you know, has been the founder of the Trends Journal, which is published four times a year at trends or trendresearch.com. He is one of the leading strategists in the world today on almost all trends and including 300 different fields that he looks into with his staff in depth. It's nice to have you back with us today, Gerald. Oh, thanks for having me, Gary. Gerald, I'm going to give you two interlo- interlocking uh, questions. First, yesterday, with questions that the uh, Greek government might do something as irresponsible and as uh, stupid as...